Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for a review for Halo straight from Paramount Plus season two, episode one. Um, at this point in time, we probably have already done our non spoiler discussion about this show and giving you our personal perspectives on it after watching the first three episodes. So go and check that out if you have not already watched anything you want to kind of go spoiler free because this is going to be a very spoiler filled episode dissection. So I have a co-host up here. Probably, I don't think we've ever done a a, a show before, but I'm going to bring him in. Busy. What's hey, up? Hey, man. I'm excited. I'm really excited, dude. <laughs> I feel like we've never really picked apart a show like this. Like, the shows that we usually work on are like the, you know, the shows that are that everyone is talking about. Usually shows that are in more of a positive light, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, such as The Last of Us, stuff like that, you know? So it, uh, to be able to branch out and watch more stuff, man, it's it's... It's cool, you know, and after season one, I've been looking forward to seeing how, you know, people <laughs> see this, you know, and um, yeah, yeah, it, man. Yeah, I, I think I think this is really good because we've never actually had a conversation on your perspective on um, season one. But I, I will talk about myself. I am a big Halo fan. Um, shoot, I remember in college playing Halo three and just being so hyped about everything that they did with that and kind of moving forward to like Halo Reach, Halo 4, Halo 5. And I'm just a huge fan of the franchise, but it always started with that original Halo 1 and Halo 2. Dare I say Halo 2 is honestly one of the best games ever made. Sheesh. But I was unsure about the first season. Would it actually work? Now, I watched that pilot, and I think most people watching the pilot were really excited. You know, it's like, oh, snap, yo, it's about to be crazy. He got the Spartan, got the men in here, and he's about to do his thing. And then he takes his helmet off, and everybody loses yeah. their minds. And I personally didn't have an issue with it because I've always wanted to kind of feel more connected to John in a different way. Like, uh -huh. we've always been exposed to him, and it's always been like, oh, he's got his helmet off, but we doesn't. And <laughs> we don't see it. We don't know anything more about him, but we start to kind of unpiece unpack a lot of the different things that make him who he is and in this first season we get a lot of that but i think that the detriment to it is not john himself it's not his story i think it's the other threads in between i think that all the stuff with the spartans was positive all the stuff with john and how they dissected him especially with halsey i think was great it was more so everything else that people had issue with and I was a little bit more lenient on it, but what was your take on the first season before we go into this first episode? So I feel like my perspective is a little different because uh, going into this, I, I'm i not a huge Halo fan. Like, it's not that I have any beef with it. I just never really got around to playing the games, you know? So um, going into this, I was just, you know, it was, it was fresh, you know? I'm not like someone who is comparing it to the source material, someone who's like, you know, well, they didn't do this, so it's not my you know, favorite thing, or it's, you know, they could have done this differently. Like I didn't have anything to compare it off of. So I'm watching it completely fresh. And, um, you know, I honestly, I enjoyed everything. I think the only thing that I really wasn't a huge fan of is a lot of the pirate stuff. I mean, a lot of it was really cool, but there was just some stuff that felt a little dry to me in the first season, but you know, I really didn't understand the beef with him taking off the helmet because I never experienced you know, the games, you know, so I, I can understand why people would be upset with that, but I'm looking at this as its own thing, you know, so I'm not comparing it to anything. So I'm just enjoying it for what it is. And that's, you know, you know, I don't know, like space cops. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't even know. Like, this is, this has been fun. I, I enjoy what I've seen. And, and, you know, um, the first season, there was parts that, you know, kind of drew me out a little bit, but coming on to season two, I think like they started off pretty, pretty strong in some areas. In yeah. some areas, which I want to make sure I put that out there right now. Some areas were badass, but, you know, we'll get into that. Yeah, we will. We will. I think that if I had to resort it down to two characters, maybe more so one character. And it sucks because a big part of how Master Chief got involved with reconnecting back to humanity because of this one character. And I'm not talking about his love interest. I'm talking about Quan. And Quan ended up connecting with Soren, the space pirate that was a mm -hmm. de facto Spartan. And I think that the more we spent time with them, the more and more I kind of was getting taken out. Ex yeah. um, and I think a lot of people felt the same exact way. And it's not to say that their, their characters aren't interesting on paper. It's just you've got a show that's got these superhuman entities that are trying to <laughs> stop the covenants, trying to stop the floods, trying to stop a 
intergalactic war. And I'm sitting there following this character that already, you know, rubbed me the wrong way early on. And then this other character that's supposed to have this connection to John that's not even in any scenes with him. He's with her. And it was just, <laughs> it's this one, it just didn't work, I think. And I, the other part I think that didn't work with a lot of different people was his relationship with uh, Maki. I think that some people just were okay. burned over that because we've never really seen Master Chief in any kind of emotional connection with anyone outside of Cortana. And Cortana was introduced into the first season, but it was more so as a safety guard because his mind was slipping in and out of his past and his present and his love for this woman. I didn't really have any issue with their, their story. Honestly, me not, you know, being, like I said, a huge fan, it really felt out of place, you know, with him, you know, being attracted to her or like them, their little connection, or if, if you will, it just felt really out of place. And yeah. it felt a little forced in, in some, some, you know, some parts, honestly. Mm-hmm. And uh, back to the whole Quan situation, um, I feel the same way. I mean, the only really thing that really had me interested with her character was the fact that she had some type of connection with John and I'm over here thinking, oh, this is going to open up something with this character. We're going to see some crazy moments with him actually touching his humanity more, maybe. Mm-hmm. And although we did see that later on, but like I truly thought she was going to be the, like the main key and we were going to see so many moments between them two and it was going to be fun. But then they separated them two. So the one thing that I really enjoyed with her character was kind of like, you know, that relationship was taken away. So it, right off the rip, I just wasn't to, you know, there with yeah. what they were doing so even now the whole pirate stuff just it's not really for me i love yeah. the character you know soren i love what they're doing i love the idea of him but it's just not hitting the mark with me right now yeah you don't have a reason to care which in this episode we'll get to that in a second let's let's go ahead and just get to the first episode so yeah the first episode starts off john is basically what's looked to be on like an emergency room and Mm -hmm. Cortana is talking with him and he's just not moving. We knew the end of the last season, he basically gave up his memories and wiped himself clean to be a more efficient Spartan. Most people actually going into this second season are happy because like, oh, wow, he gets forget all about Maki and all the crazy foolishness. He can just be a Spartan. So most people are like, he's never going to take his helmet off again. You guys, he took his helmet off. Um, <laughs> that moment, and, I'm pretty sure the first scene was him, you know. Yeah, he was. On the, yeah, yeah, he he was on the table. He, was, he didn't have no helmet on, but Katana <laughs> was trying to talk to him and trying to wake him up. But we know that their their connection got severed. We don't know the links of it or what that means, but it, it seems like she was eradicated as much as his consciousness. Either way, moving forward, they transition to them on the scene, like he's in full gear they're assessing like a combat situation and like kai and all the rest of them vanik all posted up and i think it was was it kai and him that ran or was it riz and him that ran towards i think it might have been him and kai it was him and kai because um yeah yeah because i think i think because we had the other guy with um oh my god I'm so bad with names but yeah it was pretty oh, sure yeah. it was the guy. And were together yeah yeah sure. yeah and so when they kind of running off I was like oh snap the budget got lifted up a little bit they are moving yeah they I were hitting like, the jets bro they were booking it and I was like bro like you got hit by one of these jokers man you're going down like it's They're like tanks, man. With a tank. Exactly. And and that's what I was thinking, because just the way they were moving, the way I don't know if they did it on purpose, but the way they're kind of like bouncing, it looks like they're carrying two tons themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like that armor. I don't know how it is in the games, but it Mm -hmm. looks like they're wearing two tons worth of armor. So just the way their movement was like, I'm like, my first thought is like, damn, like they're they're booking it. Like if they hit somebody like they're going to Ray Lewis the shit out of somebody, it's going to be crazy if they end up hitting somebody. Like, I can't even imagine what it's like, but it was like the way their movement was everything. I thought it was a phenomenal way to kind of start off the season. I'm like, this is the stuff that I wanted to see. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, all right, they kind of trying to win us back after, you know, some of the stuff in the first season. So it was it just really got me excited just from like an action standpoint, if you will. Yeah. And the people that they were there for, essentially they were letting them know like y'all in the middle of war, like you guys need to retreat. And 
the lady that was kind of the overhead leader there was like, we're not moving for anything. And it was so weird because as soon as John interfaced with her, she just was like, like, I know where you're going. Like, yeah. I, know, I know your future. And she, it was almost like, it was like an elemental moment. And that's not the first time this happened. Like the first season, this happened several different times with John. It's like, he's got a higher destiny slash calling mm -hmm. um, and everybody can feel it, but it's just not happening yet. Um, but either way, he kind of felt it too. And I was like, I was glad about that. Cause I was like, okay, he's still trying to process his emotions. He's not completely white. Mm -hmm. And the other part of that is his humanity came out because some OSDs were kind of going and fighting and kind of trying to survey what was going on because they were trapped up there. Johnny went up there and I think that somebody would, was seeing like the flashes. He got there, intercepted. He saw like a group there and they were like, I am terrified to move. Something is killing us. And they were all kind of like, uh, OK, let's go. And this one guy that was said it, he got literally snatched. Yeah, out it was like it was uh, he, they called him like Corporal Rand, I think his name was. No. And immediately I'm like, maybe we should listen to Rand because <laughs> because I think it was it was Risen Vanek that saw the flashing lights. Yep. So then it was Kai and uh, John that ended up going into or ended up going near it and then john ended up going in it and um so as soon as they said oh yeah they started like kind of mocking him oh corporal red yeah. thinks we shouldn't get up because there's something you know there and it could hear us and you know and then i'm like yo shut up shut up shut up and then immediately they just get sucked in it was like i was watching some horror movie and i feel like that was filmed but the way they shot that scene was it was somewhat terrifying. Like I literally like kind of like I moved a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. When the first woman, the woman that was kind of talking her nonsense, was like, "Hey, like you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about," like you know, and then he, she just gets sucked into the mist. I'm like, like that's crazy. That's she, crazy. She got God, and it's <laughs> interesting because if you have played the game, you know that the elites can disappear. They do have cloaking. They do have swords, and they are next level it's just in this situation like john you know you know john like john's a whole pound like he was putting in work <laughs> yeah, he was going and slicing and dicing they were going and trying to gang up on him like he he was going blow right, he was blow. Kicking ass, yeah. and he gave the other chick a, a shotgun she was doing pretty good for a little while and then you know john got his shotgun started going like action yeah. wise, it was perfect i they think the first, perfect. like i said the first 15 20 minutes started off the season perfectly because the action is why i'm here man i mean the lore is cool but to see this dude shredding through these these creatures that are like two times his size right is just so fun to watch right. i mean the fact that like we saw like this dude is already a monster of himself like he's a six five man you know so seeing him standing next to these you know normal people you know <laughs> and seeing them like you know terrified getting torn apart and then here he comes just ripping apart three at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it really clarified, like, you know, how strong this dude is. And we already saw that in the first season. Like, we know he's no joke. But, like, like he's earned the name Master Chief. And it's like the more they show these a these action scenes, you know, the more I'm just like, this is, this is fire. Like, this is cool, you yeah, know? It's interesting because the aliens call him the demon. <laughs> Because yeah, um, because of essentially like yeah, this man was born <laughs> in our lives, and we're we we we're gonna come. The funny thing is, I love about this scene is that even after he was putting in all that work, like she kind of was like he went to her, and he's like it's okay, everything's gonna be okay, and then all of a sudden she looks terrified because they're all completely surrounded with swords, and in one specific individual, which I wish I could talk about, was kind of just looking at him like. <laughs> take it personally. <laughs> he did something. I took it personally, and then he just decided to opt out and like, yeah, we're gonna dip. We're just gonna fry y'all. Like, good luck surviving the 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 mass volcanic eruptions. About to <laughs> but I mean, the fact was that he was dead to rights. Like, he was not gonna survive that. They let him survive that. Um, and I don't know what was your take on that because you, you, because you don't know the games, you don't know. What yeah. Uh, what was your take on that? Yeah, so honestly, I just thought it was probably one of the most badass things they could have done. I wasn't sure at first if it was a, a direct command from, you know, McKee or whatever her name was, or or if it was just a warning, if you will. Mm -hmm. But, like, I mean, either way, the way that they were turning off the energy swords, I believe is what they're called, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, like, 
the way that they just slowly started disappearing because the light from the energy swords were the, was the only thing that was making them visible, really. Yeah. And then as they started shutting off, you just see each individual one kind of fade away. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I know this is probably a terrible comparison, but it kind of gave me like, I don't know if you, you saw Ahsoka, but when they yeah. introduced um, Anakin in episode five and they ended up showing like that quick silhouette of him flashing the, the lightsaber in the mist and then you see a little like shock of Vader. It kind of reminded me of that because all of a sudden you just see them. First, you see them like turn on the swords and then all of them like, you know, appeared out of thin air. Yeah. I'm like, yo, that's a problem. You know, first I thought I, thought I saw two. I'm like, oh, light work, bro. We got this shit. And then you see <laughs> 10 more in the back and I'm like, watch out. And it was just another moment that I thought was just shot. Like it was just handled so great. You know what I'm saying? But I truly have no theories on what they're trying to do. Like, I have a whole bunch of things bouncing in my head, like I said. Like, I don't know if it was a warning or if it was a direct command to back the hell up. Either way, I mean, I think as for the season goes, it's a really good way to lay down the groundwork. You know what I'm saying? It let yeah. it makes us think. Specifically me, I have no idea what's to come. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, it, it, it makes the Covenant feel like they are way better prepared than what mm-hmm. we it because the last season like they kind of thought they were just savages you know what i'm they, saying they took, they took a l the last season like master chief went he went he went in on him on the last episode but the fact that they got the upper hand on him and then the last scene of this episode showed them rallying behind about to go ham as well like those ships popping out of no like yeah it's as a halo fan is so exciting like i think I'm allowing myself to kind of be okay with some of the exposition and setup and staging they're doing. No, I know good. where this is going. Okay. I know exactly where this is going. But good. Anyway. Um, and I feel like that's what, that's what a lot of fans need to do because everyone's just thinking about like what they're taking away and they're not necessarily thinking of what they potentially could be building up to. Yeah. You know? And like I said, I, I mean I've seen a lot of a lot of different media, so I know what it's like to have the the show or movie go different from the, the source material if you will mm-hmm. you know so it's like i can understand the frustrations but the bigger picture it's still going to end up you know hopefully the way you guys want it to end up so like you said seeing all those ships kind of got you excited for what's to come if you will yeah. and uh just just to see that that huge ass smile on your face right now that excitement like i'm ready like i don't know what's coming but i know it's going to be fire like i'm i'm ready dude like yeah. honestly i'm i'm going to keep my mouth shut <laughs> But yeah, yeah it, was, it was a conversation that he had with the new person that took over for um, Van, which is a good segue because Joseph Morgan, if you've seen the originals, um, he plays the role of okay. Klaus Michelson. That's really what I good. thought. That is, that's him. Because I've never seen the show. I have a friend that has like a poster on the wall and immediately when he popped up, like I'm like, I know that guy from somewhere and it's going to kick my ass. Like, I don't know. And I'm like, wasn't it the Vampire Diaries? But yep. I guess I was off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I was all right, yeah. I'm no, like, no, no. He started on the Vampire Diaries. Okay, so we did. Okay. Right, yeah, yeah. He's one of the main pivotal. Because I knew he looked familiar, bro. Yeah. And then he also played Brother Blood on Titans as well. Oh, I um, never, I didn't even see season four yet. Or yeah. three, finish three. But, um, but yeah, so he's the person to take over for Vanek. And, okay. Or not Vanek, but, um, God. Halsey. Halsey. And, um, like initially you kind of like, oh, okay, he's giving them their respect and he's like playing a real political, but you know, like anytime you got like a new manager or a new management in general, they're going to want to reinvent the wheel and put their stamp on what is, what is it? The Make question it is sense. whether or not this is an ethical man or is he playing this to a slant? I don't personally know um, what his intentions are, but at the same time, he does not believe that Master Chief is mentally stable and technically yeah. he's not <laughs> like i mean he's going he's going in the dive bars trying to see cortana in the back of the head like i mean I, I i don't know it was really weird scene but it makes sense because he's trying to get answers and he knows that he can't get them from anyone yeah. around him he really doesn't trust anybody except for his team and you know joseph morton's character basically sidelined him he's like look Y'all are not cleared to go into any kind of engagement with this. We're going to make sure we pacify everybody's perspective on you guys. And then when I feel comfortable, then you're going to move forward. And Master Chief was kind of, he was giving them his heart. He was like, look, this is what I know. This is what I'm worried about. But from a chain of command standpoint, it doesn't make sense for 
chief to kind of tell this man what to do. We know sure. what he's saying is true, but Joseph Morgan's like, yeah, I don't know this man from two bricks. But what was your take on his character? What do you think? Well, before I dive into that, I, I really did love that they had John kind of standing up on his own t- two feet, kind of like putting in his two cents. And he wasn't just saying his two cents, like he was being aggressive about it because like they're showing like he's passionate about this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he's feeling everything. So like when they're not taking his word for it, he's feeling that frustration, which is just it's it's just I don't know. I just I thought that was a really cool a moment but um as for the new character if you will i don't trust anybody i have trust issues with all television shows so i do not know what they're doing but um honestly like i wanted to believe he was good but then it's like as they were talking more about him they started we started learning a little more about him the fact that he has a combat background like he's actually seen the field and um you know like it, it, it leads me to believe that we'll end up seeing what he's capable of later on but whether that means it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, like if he's on our side or on the other side, I don't know yet. And that's what is that's what's kind of terrifying, you know what I'm saying? Cuz how equipped is he? How good at his job is he, you know? And it's like I think the introduction of his character was really good cuz on the same time it got it got us irritated, but it really get, it kind of left us open like who is this dude? Like like they barely gave us any information other than oh, he's a determined, you know, uh, dude who's good at his job, you know, like, I want to know more about this man. What is he capable of? What does he actually want? You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's going to be interesting for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited for him. He's a good actor, so I think it's going to work through. Now, from that point, you know, John is kind of put into a spot because now he's like, I'm back to square one, not getting any answers, more secrets, more lies, and I don't have my memory, and I don't have Cortana. And so... What was another interesting transition scene is that it was Kai Vanig, um, Riz, and him. And I think that those are other Spartans, I believe, that kind of kind of roll yeah. up and kind of giving them Cobalt, like grief. Cobalt beef. Yeah. And they were giving them a whole bunch of grief and crap. But you know, Cobalt still, you know, pay respect, you know, mm-hmm. to to John. But I feel like what's the reason why they did that that way is I think that that is that is the crew that you know james is going to trust to run all his missions okay i think he wants something to control as opposed to something that he says that he wants to perpetuate that they need to be heroes but i think he wants something to control um okay. in my personal opinion but i don't know uh what would your take on their interaction with the other spark i thought it, i thought it was really cool because at first like i mean i wasn't sure who they were but then immediately you understand who they are like they're like a rival team you know what i'm saying so yeah. to see them basically showing disrespect to everyone but um what's his name john yeah, i yeah. thought was extremely cool and it really highlighted like just how much john has done you know in that spartan gear like people like you may not gotta you don't gotta like them but you gotta respect them you know what i'm saying and yeah, put some respect um, on the sure. there was a lot of comedic moments here which i enjoyed you know with uh for an example venick he was like once the, they just kept talking their nonsense venick said something on the, on the lines of keep talking and I'm gonna wear you like a sock and I just thought that was so funny dude I'm like oh my god like they're talking their stuff you know and I love that considering that like I said in the first season they were like mind control robots you know I felt like yeah they had personality but not enough to really give a damn you know what I'm saying now we're here and we're actually watching them like you know their personalities come out we're seeing what kind of ticks them off what irritates them what jokes you know can push them that far and uh, we have di- like their personalities are coming out. You know, Vanek is clearly confident but willing to make jokes. We have Riz, who was just constantly, you know, kind of instigating but like talking her stuff. You know, at the same time, like you keep talking, I'm gonna lay you out. You know, is essentially what she was saying. So it was just really cool the interaction. You know, it really brought out who they were. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because obviously they weren't gonna actually brawl here and there. No. Nah. But to see them kind of get pushed to that social limit. It was really fun to see, but at the end of it, we ended up having that moment between John and who the leader. I don't know what his name is exactly, but um, we have that moment where he says, like, you know, treat this like a real, you know, real mission. Treat this like a real thing, because yeah. what uh more like what's the name? Ackerson James. What's what's the character yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he um obviously isn't letting them know everything. So yeah. John is extremely irritated by that. So he wants to let this team know, you know take this seriously you're not my team but at the end of the day like right. you're yeah i don't want you to die like 
and you could see how much it bothered him, you know, yeah. that they weren't truthful with them because they're throwing them out, you know, to the wild animals without giving them an idea what they're headed at, you know? Yeah. They're, they're giving them no information, and I, that truly pissed them off. Yeah, and it's interesting because then after that, he goes and meets with the previous admiral that was kind of sidelined, but she basically kind of, like, wants to get out of him, like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. And he kind of was like, I don't really trust anybody. <laughs> nah, yeah, 100%. But this is what I'm noticing. This is what <laughs> I'm seeing. And she's like, all right, bet. Find the proof. And mm-hmm. I know why she said that. It wasn't about trying to find the proof. She's trying to get back into power. Okay. But she's trying to use him, you know, ultimately to do that. So they, their agendas merge together essentially through this. But she really just wants to get her credibility back. Okay. So she put all that trust in, uh, in Halsey. And it screwed her, ultimately. Um, like, it screwed her when it came to Cortana as a program. It screwed her when it came to John. It screwed her when it came to Halsey and the experiments that she was doing. But I think that she knew that John's not going to stop, which is smart. Like, always bet on John. But um, to me, after this point, everything else is kind of whatever, to be mm-hmm. honest with you um yeah like i said immediately after this when they dove into the pirate stuff that's where it started kind of shutting down for me you know (laughs) like i said i understand what they were doing but i just wasn't hooked i wanted to be because what they were doing seemed cool but it just was not pulling me in i don't know what it was but back to the whole you know john thing and then you know uh, the woman who wants to get back into power it just felt like such a manipulative tactic what yeah. she was doing, the way she was like, he, he said flat out, like, he wasn't even hiding. He's like, what can you do for me? Right. And she's like, what's she say? Like, I, I'll believe you or something right. like that. Which right. is something this poor guy has, he just doesn't have. The yeah. only person that even, like, even pretended to feel like that was Halsey. Right. You know, she pretended to actually, you know, care what is what he was thinking. And she could have cared about what he was thinking. But at the end of the day he doesn't feel that anymore you know like nobody's taking him seriously and he wants people to hear what he's saying without them thinking he's going crazy yeah so for her to just say those words it's just such a a mean tactic you know and she knew it was going to work and that's part of the reason why i do not trust her i wanted to but i mean like for her to play with his, his emotions and the only thing she has to offer him is the one thing that he just doesn't have and that's someone's you know ears yeah. I, mean, I just felt bad, man. I felt bad, but it's crazy. Yeah, like, it's like John's going through this really big spiral. Like, I could honestly avoid even talking about the, the, the pirates because him going mm-hmm. to this um, AI, I ain't going to say brothel, this AI location <laughs> <laughs> and trying to get a moment of me time, but he's basically trying to remake an idea of Cortana but really, ultimately, he wanted to reconnect with um, Maquis. And uh-huh. he, I think on a subconscious level, he doesn't remember her, but he does. Like, she's there, but the yeah. only gateway is really Cortana. And, and that's what he was piecing together when he was saying, you know, like, I feel like something's embedded in the back of my head. I just don't know. It, it, I think it's you. Yeah. But, like, it's clearly it's clearly eating him up, you know? Yeah. But Yeah. I guess we got to talk about it. I'll just run through it real quick. <laughs> so back on the Pirate Bay, yeah. um, there's a couple of different people that have been swept up and they've been kind of forced into this fight club situation or they're going to die. And it was kind of like what he provide as far as information. One of the young boys, instead of getting pounded, um, he basically is like, oh, I know where the location of Halsey is. And I think that uh, Soren initially kind of just like said whatever. Then he signaled somebody to go in and treat mm-hmm. him because he didn't want to spend money on it. And then it goes to Soren talking with his his wife and seeing his son. The only thing that I liked about this whole sequence is really the son. I thought the son was dope. The son's got his little Master Chief helmet and his yeah, little, like action figures. <laughs> and he knows his dad is speaking some BS. Like he knows that. One, they're absolutely monsters out there. Two, that his dad is being less than honest with them. But I, Soren giving like his wife like the back and forth was exhausting to me. And then when they finally did intercept the boy, and the boy was like, "I'm gonna show you what's this, what's that." Later on, you find out the boy was actually setting him up. Like all, mm-hmm. 
all of that, it feels like a waste of time and a waste of space. I can go over it, but for me personally, I could have done without it and just wiped it out of this episode and episode. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand what they were doing when they were talking about how, like, while they were having the conversation, they were building up, like, all of this can be taken from taken from you. And she right. was kind of letting him know, like, you know, like, you're clearly not taking care of your crew. Your crew's not feeling as though they're, they're you know, being taken yeah. care of, you know, and it's going to bite you in the ass. And uh, we ended up seeing that happen. I mean, I, I straight up said, by the end of the season, they're probably going to end up betraying him. I didn't expect it to be by the end of the episode. <laughs> so, um... What I'm a little worried about is like how much they're gonna end up focusing on Soren in the next, you know, few episodes, considering now he's probably gonna get locked up or we're gonna have like a prison moment. Like what are we gonna end up doing, you know, to see, you know, how much are they gonna focus on him and how interesting is that story gonna be? Like I said, I don't have beef with the Soren character, but I feel like maybe throwing him in a different setting could be somewhat entertaining. But it, it truly is so early to tell, I don't know. We we already know what's gonna happen. Well, I I, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna predict. <laughs> Juan, who finally shows up in this episode, was talking to his son about the monsters. He's gonna tell her like, I think they got my dad. She's like, I'm gonna go and save him. Don't worry, he did. <laughs> and she's gonna go on the excursion to try to bust him out. And they're never gonna interact with John at all. And it's just gonna be a <laughs> way to freaking oh, man. Time. like in any in anyway. Um, that's my prediction. Like that Quan now that she's in this, I know we're gonna do her. Like, I think the episode <laughs> worked better without her in it. And I think that if they remove Soren, his storyline out of it, would have been better, but I feel bad for the actors and the actress, but I truly want to be optimistic about that storyline, but it's it's kind of difficult, man. It really is. I just I just have no interest in it. I think that's the problem. Like they burnt me with the first season, and it's like I I I don't know. I don't know. Just give me the Spartan, bro. Give give. No, for real. Story. I was literally thinking maybe if they threw a Spartan in there, but <laughs> I really don't know at this point, dude. But um. But yeah, from there, I mean, we get understanding, like, I think they did that little monologue, and then we come to find out, like, the real monsters are coming. They actually come, and they're rolling deep. And I thought that was such a freaking dope shot. Dude, yeah, um, it was like Rise of Skywalker type vibes, where you see all the, like, the, the what is it, the Star Destroyers kind of yeah. rise up, and I'm just like, oh, man, this yeah. is, I've I'm seen this before. <laughs> ships and Banshees, like, his. I, I was nerding out. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm excited to see where we go from here. It's just I think that if they took the Soren storyline out, I think that this could have been a 10 out of 10 episode. When instead it's like more leaning towards like an 8.5. Like it's not a bad episode at all. Mm-hmm. Like it's actually really freaking dope. It's a really good start. A lot better. But I, I I really want them to kind of realize if they're gonna continue with the Soren and the pirate stuff. They really got to up the ante and make it worth it, you know, because we can't dive from seeing Spartans, you know, like what, how high the stakes are there to just diving into Soren's character where everything's kind of more personal and more on a personal level. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I feel like things are just more kind of it's a, a bigger scale when it comes to the Spartans. And yeah. I'm just I'm not invested when they switch. Like, I feel like I could be invested if what we were getting with the Spartan stuff wasn't so cool you know what i'm saying right. yeah yeah there's 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 a character that's coming that is gonna literally make soren's character irrelevant <laughs> that's, that's where i can kind of put it like i don't see how his story or Quan's story should be kept or will be kept if they continue past this second season do you think there's any chances that they could merge characters that you're familiar with to, you know, characters we've already seen? No? Not, not, okay. no. Because <laughs> I've seen, like, shows make mistakes, and I really hope this isn't one of them. You know what I'm nah, saying? they, nah, this, this is a, a absolute, matter of fact, even Cortana is a way more interesting character in storyline. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll rate this at an 8.5 out of 10, or if you're going to A to B, sorry, A to F, uh b plus a minus uh what do you rate it i, I think i'm gonna stand with the i think i want to stand with an eight or 7.5 okay. 
Like, I really believe that the whole Soren thing, like, I was interested in it, but I just felt like, again, it, it ended up meaning nothing to me at the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we knew what was going to happen, and, you know, I just, that really dragged the episode for me a little bit. But as for everything with uh, John and everyone else, it just, it truly was amazing. So I think I'm going to lean more towards eight. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm in. They, they won me over. Let's keep it going. Like keep keep pressing on the gas, up the ante as far as the lore, but at the same time make sure you up ante as far as the action. And I think we're gonna have a really good season. But yeah, that is our closing remarks on episode one. Hope you guys enjoyed our dissection of this. I'm gonna get busy. His due. Go ahead and plug your content, man. Of course. I mean, busy Brian everywhere. You can find me again. Busy Brian everywhere. Busy reactions on uh, Instagram and. I'm looking forward to talking more about this, you know, all over the place, whether it's in a live stream or or shorts on TikTok and YouTube or Instagram, whatever. Just show me some love and give me a follow. (laughs) Thank you so much, Busy. I'm excited to go into the rest of this. I may add another person to this discussion. But we'll just hold tight for now. But thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button. Go and check out all of Busy's content as well. I'll try to put it in the description bar below. Peace, people. I can see the skyline, 50 mile radius on my timeline. Ain't nothing on my